Hi, let us step up a notch our basic flash tweening by tweening multiple objects uh, using multiple layers. So let's get started. First, let's open up a file that has some of the work done for us. And let's move the stage down closer to the timeline. And let's see how this animation works. So just play it. The menu choice is control play or you can use your shortcut key. Now we'll modify this animation and add a second object. In our case will be a circle that will move from the same positions as the square only right to left and will travel above the square as it goes. First let's take a look at this animation in more detail. You can see the spline path is showing us smaller intervals in the beginning and larger ones at the end, which means the end will be faster because the animation has to travel greater distances for the same amount of time. And you see that we have a property keyframe down here at the frame 30, which defines a change in properties, which is really our new position. And if we look up on our properties window for the motion tween, and we notice that there is a ease in of minus 100 and that gives us the uh, the ease in effect that you're seeing where it's slower in the beginning and quicker at the end. To add our circle tween we'll need to add a layer so let's first give the layer that's there a more meaningful name and the name I'm going to give it is L the number 2 R standing for left to right and the word square. Now with this layer selected, we'll use either the right mouse click where you can choose off the menu insert layer or the shortcut icon down in the bottom left corner of the timeline panel add a new layer. And we can see we have a new layer and it numbered it according to uh, the last number of layers you've created. And in this case, we'll rename it. So I'll click twice into it and I'll name this one R the number 2 L circle standing for right to left circle. I want to take note of what has happened on the timeline and we have what we call a static span which is indicated by a blank keyframe as the first frame and that's shown with an open circle and the sizing handle at the end of the span which with the shift key you can grab and adjust the distance. The blank keyframe indicates there's just no objects on it, so it's time to start recognizing some of the symbols in your timeline. So a keyframe that has an open circle means a keyframe with no objects. One with a filled circle means there's an object there. And a diamond means it's just a property change for the object to the keyframe to the left. Now we'll draw our circle that we plan to animate. So I'll come over here to the toolbar and select the oval tool and we'll set the fill color to the same color as the rectangle. Stroke the same color and also the stroke size will make that 12 that will match the stroke of the rectangle. Additionally we'll have the object drawing mode turned off. Now we'll come over here to our new layer and the blank keyframe at the beginning selected and on our stage with the shift key down we can draw a circle approximately the same size as the rectangle. Hold the shift key and draw it out. It doesn't have to be perfectly the same size if you're following along. We can see some changes occur to our timeline layer for the circle. First of all the first keyframe has now got a filled in dot or circle so that indicates there's an object on there and of course it's the circle we drew and the span became gray just to indicate the same effect that the fact there is something going to appear all the way across in a static unchanged position. Now let's observe what happens with our new circle and so we'll play the animation and you can see that the circle does not move and that's what we mean by a static span it means the items on that keyframe for that span stay in the same position 
And you also notice that the rectangle is below the circle, and that's because its layer on the timeline is below the circle's layer. And we'll change that a little later on. Now we will convert the static span for the circle layer to a motion tween layer. And so how we'll do that is we'll select the layer, and we'll right mouse click and choose create motion tween at the top of the menu. And we want the circle to be converted to a symbol because it's necessary for a motion tween and we did draw it as a shape. Now let's take a moment to do some housekeeping. I'll select the circle that's on the stage and come up here and look at the properties for that object and we can see it is a movie clip and it's the instance of symbol space 2 so we want to do some naming in our library so we'll go into the library and we can see that we have both symbols in here and so we'll cl click twice into each one and give it a name that is appropriate for what's in it and we'll just call them simply circle for the circle movie clip symbol and for the square, we'll call it square. And then we'll select properties again, and we can see that the name of the symbol now appears as part of the properties for each symbol as we select them. Now what we'll do is add a properties keyframe for our circle layer. So we'll go to the last frame, frame 30, select it, and then on stage, we'll grab the center of the circle with the selection tool, hold the shift key down, and drag it over to the right side of the stage about on top of the square. And we can see we now have a spline path for the circle. So now let's see how this affected our animation. And I'll start by dragging the playback head on the timeline and you can see that the circle and the square move at different intervals because one has equal intervals, that's the circle, and the square has an easing effect, so the intervals are different. We'll use play, that's control play off the main menu, or your shortcut key for your computer. Or we can use the shortcut keys for one frame at a time, the period and the comma key, and you can see the difference in the movement of the two, but they both start and end at the same frame. And of course the circle appears above the square. We can change that by rearranging the layers on the timeline and how you do that is grab a layer's title with the mouse and just drag it so that it's above or below other layers and now you can see the square appears above the circle. Now we'll reverse the direction of the circle tween so we'll select that layer on the timeline and right mouse click and on our menu we have reverse keyframes and we can see the effect of that the circle starts on the right side the rectangle on the left and they cross paths in the middle and again you can still see that the circle is underneath of the rectangle as far as layering is set and we'll make one last change to this animation we'll go to the middle of the time which is 15 frames and select the circle frame and we'll take the circle with the selection tool and grab the center and move it up and we'll sort of bend its spline path so that's above the rectangle and we'll see what the effect of that is and we get kind of a jumping effect as the circle again still moves from right to left but only in a curved path and the rectangle left to right in a linear path. Okay, that's all we have for this example, so let's give it a brand new name to show the work we completed, so we'll save it and give it a name. I'll just add the word practice in here, and we're done. Okay, that gave us a good start on how we can use more than one layer to animate more than one object, and we also did a little housekeeping, so we made sure our layers were named, our symbols were named, and we learned how to do a reverse of a tween once we've got it built.